Hey guys, welcome back to the High Homes channel. Welcome back to another episode of Costa Insights. We're here with lovely Kim. Good morning to you, Kim. For today's episode in Costa Insights, we're going to talk about a super interesting topic. Yeah. The question is, is the Spanish property market collapsing? So let's dive deep. No one better with us than Kim Burt to talk about it. Are you guys ready? Let's go. So guys, welcome back. First of all, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to press the button, subscribe to our channel, and stay posted with the best of the best. Today's episode, Kim, the question is, is the Spanish property market collapsing? All these people on comments talking us about pricing, blah, blah. So before we get to that subject, which yeah. will be a bit, in a bit, um, I think we have to talk about how Spain has evolved over the last years. Yeah. You've been in Spain uh, since what year? 1990. So let's start with that. What was Spain like in 1990? Let's talk about you know how it's changed over the years. Your view, and then we'll get into pricing. Yeah. Seen so many changes over the uh, over the years. In 1990, Spain was just becoming part of the EU, so that had a sort of like a, a, an effect. We moved here, and everyone's saying, "Oh, we're in a recession time," but we were young. We had no responsibilities as such, so we didn't actually feel that effect on our lives. And then because of the EU, a lot of money was actually pumped into Spain, and so we saw incredible changes to the infrastructure when we first moved here we had the N340 it was the most dangerous road in the whole of Europe but with the money coming in from EU then created this amazing road system that we've now got the good thing about the Spanish they were proud of being part of the EU so there'd be signs up around project is actually funded by the by the EU so we then saw a period of growth but over those the, those years Spain has gone up and down with the things that have happened in the in the market. The Costa del Sol towards Malaga, that's where the infrastructure was, but it's gradually sort of like moving along along the actual coast. And I would say the last downturn was around about the 2007, 2008, which was a global um, economic downturn. And after that, the cranes. In the boom times, the cranes were all over the place. And then when we had the crash, it was noticeable. The cranes disappeared. just disappeared. They disappeared. You know, we, it's, quite, it's quite interesting because we talk about Spain and like a lot of people have always referred to, I mean, Spain's a huge place right now. Yeah. Let's just focus into Costa del Sol. Yeah. Um, it's a bit easier to talk about. But if we sort of zoom into Costa del Sol, though, um, you know, when I started in real estate it was just mm. after 2008. Yeah. So that was just after the financial crisis. Yeah. And I started in the real, my real estate career with what was left from that, you know. Correct, from, that's you know, right. What was left from that storm, which yeah. was all the bank stock, right? Absolutely. And traditionally, you know, before that and after that, Spain was known as a cheap place true. to buy Very holiday true. homes. I Abs mean, when you first started with a budget of 180K, 190K, oh, you could buy, you know, properties, you know, in, in Riviera, which, you know, that same property today would be maybe 250, 260. Absolutely, absolutely. And all the way down to Casares, no? Yeah, so, absolutely. So um, I think like, you know, generally people always thought, yeah, Spain is a cheaper place for holiday homes, but I think that's changed dramatically. I think that's part of the issue that we slightly have sometimes because that perception that used to be yeah. in our area is no Cheap more properties. it's yeah. no it's no more my my actual background say so we moved it my parents moved here in 85 and um, and yeah life has changed so dramatically since all those uh, those times but in our early years we actually had a restaurant for 24 years so that economic crisis it affected our business because things like um, when the euro came in, so prices increased overnight. What was one percent, hundred percent for a cup of coffee, oh, wow. became one euro fifty for a, for a cup of coffee, and it was one six six point three eight six uh, euro to to the to the peseta. So there was a dramatic increase there. So our business was affected by by that economic crisis that was going on around us. And so we, we left our restaurant um, in 2015 after 24 years. So then I went into the real estate market, which I'd obviously been aware of, but hadn't experienced it in, in that way. So I actually entered in a boom time because like those properties that you said about that were left standing, there was big companies, a lot of American companies coming in that were investing the money in into Spain. They saw that it was a great place to invest the money. They took over the structures and then redeveloped them because we had a lack of product at that time because new build was taking two years to uh, to actually uh, happen and there was very little new build at that time it was it, it, it was nothing because the cranes disappeared there was they had to wait for the building licenses they had to get the approval and everything so yeah so for me for 2016 i saw this growth this growth this growth and then the new developments sort of like coming along and then we had brexit and we thought wow you know what's going to happen with brexit but it was like a, a bit of a reverse role in some ways. It's sort of like other people that were maybe not from Britain 
I thought, okay, the Brits are going to sell. Let's jump in on that market. And then, of course, we had COVID and everything changed. We started going a little bit quieter pre-COVID. And then, in my opinion, everything just changed because, again, outdoor spaces, the weather, totally. the prices. Totally. totally. And so for me now, it's people say, hey, what's happening? It's just a gradual increase, increase, increase. It's funny, I, um, it was yesterday, no, before yesterday, I got a taxi home and I was speaking to the taxi driver and asking him like, you know, because we're in November right now. Yeah. And I asked him, how's work, right? Because normally, you know, traditionally, you know, since being born here, it was only two seasons. High season, low season. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. So we were yeah. speaking, I was speaking to the taxi driver, I was like, hey, how's, how's work? You know, it's like, we're so busy. Yeah. And he's telling me like, you know, it's sort of stabled out. Like there, there is one very high season, but the rest of the year, we're always busy because there's more people living here. Yeah. You know, and you see it in the quality of the businesses and the quality of cities, the towns, the streets, the infrastructure, it's a, it's a place to live, no? That's reflected in, in the price. So, but also, I mean, having said that, you know, when people talk about property pricing, like we get people on, on the, we, by the way, we love, all the YouTube comments. So everyone that, that has an opinion, please keep on commenting these questions because they're really good for us to discuss. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we, we got some people are going like, you know, property prices are in on the verge of collapse. And you know, like if you would have told me property prices today, four years ago, I would say that's ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. But I agree. in today's market, like you know, it's very difficult to get any, anything. For example, in the apartment market on the 350, in the villa market on the 800, let's say, yeah. depending on the different areas. No? Yeah. Yeah. I think like all of Spain has suffered enormously, actually not only Spain, globally, yeah. since you know, post-COVID. Yeah. We've seen your countries print out money to sort of defend its, its, itself against yeah. this horrible sort of pandemic. Yeah. And that's resulted in money value devaluating, yeah. money, pro money value sort of uh, plummeting. Yeah. And real estate defends itself against that. So if money value goes down by 30%, actually property value has gone up by 30% just to defend itself yeah. against inflation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's global in yeah. all of Spain. Absolutely. Like, and that's why I look at these prices today. Uh, give me a, um, a development in La Cala. Bahia okay, is Bahia, an okay. example. So in today's market, right, if you were to buy a property in Bahia, you're paying around 360, 370,000 euro for an apartment. Correct. That gets you a very nice apartment, you know, very close to amenities and top quality. Like, can that be cheaper? Like, mm. I don't see that happening. No, 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 you know, no. I don't see that happening. Like, And I think we forget, Kian, is that um, obviously our, our market is so, so international. And um, because we, I don't say we live in a bubble, but... Before you say that, yeah. Kim, for our viewers, which are looking at other parts of, of Spain, traditionally people, which are international buyers, buy in Valencia, Alicante, the coast of Spain. A lot of people relocate to Madrid and also San Sebastián. At the moment, talking about like La Costa del Sol yeah. is super international. Yeah. And it's very different, for example, to Madrid or Barcelona, where you have more domestic buyers, Correct. national buyers. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, you were yeah. just sort of to say that we're talking about that, not Costa del Sol, which yeah. is a super sort of bubble for international sort of community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it brings it to home, sort of like, uh, obviously we've had a big influx of people from the Netherlands at the moment. And, and like, I have some clients that, um, uh, you know, live in the capital and, and we're talking about prices and they say, Kim, this two bedroom, two bathroom apartment would cost double that price in the Netherlands. So again, for us living here, we uh, we sometimes think, my goodness, these prices are very, very high. But some northern European countries, it. it's still quite reasonable that, uh, that, uh, prices. That's you know? a really fantastic way of putting it. So like that's what we were talking about with, with Matt in the last episode is, you know, like you know, we are now competing at a European level. Yeah. So like, yeah. are these prices here to stay? I do believe so. Uh, there are some... Uh, it depends what development. Obviously, there because, are developments which are a bit more expensive, property areas which are a bit more expensive, yeah. like, like anything, yeah. but there still is value, no? If now you are either Dutch or you're Belgium or you're German or anywhere in Europe and you're looking to relocate to Spain, you might actually, you will definitely find a better deal in this real estate market Correct. than in your home market. Correct. And that's, a, I don't want to say what's driving most of the demand, but it's definitely a very strong driving factor yeah. in this market. Yeah, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, oh, I 100% agree with you is that there was something, don't quote me, I can't fully remember it all, but there was just had um, a report on the GDP of the, I think it was the top eight European countries and Spain was either first or second. Yeah, yeah Spain, Spain is leading, Spain <laughs> leading, is leading, is leading in, in, in economic growth. I exactly. think uh, one of the world leaders in economic growth. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. incredible, huh? Which is a reflection, I think, of again, you know, the demand that we, we can't keep up with the demand. As a result of that, it makes our job, because obviously we specialize very much in, in the new development market. Mm -hmm. And so the frustration for us is that we literally have buyers that are waiting to to buy something and we have to say whoa there is a little the, the, it's the, a waiting, they send yeah, it, it's they're sending too quickly so you know a really interesting thing like comparing this market to pre-2008 and i've said this a lot is like pre-2008 um you know banks were offering like 120 yeah, percent finance that's right, right? yes yes right? So you'd have um you know very 
high finance purchases where yeah. people would hardly have to put money down. Correct. You would, you Correct. know, they would finance the house, the purchase costs. You would even buy a car with the finance. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then prices at that time were inflated. Yeah. So exactly. like, you know, what happens is, you know, people stop buying and selling properties. The economy worsens. People can't pay their mortgage. Correct. And the banks end up executing all these mortgages. Yeah. And that is what happened when I entered the real estate market where there was so much bank stock. Yeah. Now, if you fast forward to today's market. Yeah. Like I would say that banks are super, super cautious lending money. Definitely. Average, you know, LTV is 50, 60% of, yeah. of, of property value. Correct. So there is a lot more equity of the clients in the property. True. They're True. a lot more careful when it comes to lending. Yeah. But most of the buyers are cash buyers. So these people which, you know, are calling for a collapse on this market, right? Yeah. It could be that we have a slowdown at some point, but like a collapse would mean a collapse in pricing. And I think that people that don't have very high toxic levels of finance or yeah. mortgages, yeah. you know, if the mortgage, if the property sell, you know, slows down, people aren't gonna rush to sell. No, oh goodness knows. No, absolutely, because they tend to, a lot of them are second or third homes, and so they don't need to have to, to sell it. So they, they're quite happily to sort of like, you know, sit on the that property. But but no, I, I feel that we're personally are in a stable market. I think part of that is that a resale, we call a resale something that's obviously been built and now been uh, sold on by the, the vendor. Things that are priced correctly and are quite decent, they sell. Well, no, there's a really fine. interesting like topic. Um, one of my good friends, he's Spanish, right? He's a lawyer, and his father was one of the biggest developers in Calanda. Oh, right? yeah, one, yeah. One the, I know, of, I know. One of, one of the streets, one of the streets is mean. named after him. Yeah, right? yeah. And you know, when I was born here in Malaga, and when I was a young boy, I would remember these very strong differences in seasons, oh, high gosh. season and low season, where. You would walk around Calahonda and it'd be empty. We used to say last week on New Year's Eve, last person leaving Calahonda turned the light out. <laughs> I like that one. Because we yeah. closed for six empty. weeks. Yeah, it's empty. Because yeah, January would just dead. sort of like become a ghost town. Yeah. So that also reflects in the real estate market. So you'd have these massive swings. And this developer I was just referring to, yeah. he would say the real estate market, and this, you know, is again, you know, relative to, to Costa del Sol, not to, to Spain, but in our market, yeah. they would call it Picos de Sierra. So if you see Correct. like, what do you call a Sierra? Uh, uh, a soul. A soul, Highs right? and lows. Highs, Highs and lows, lows, right? So he said that, you know, you have the Picos de Sierra. So the real estate market back then was like a season where you sold a lot, you know, a market where you were not selling a lot. And now he says that doesn't exist. And this is a veteran of developments in yeah. Costa del Sol. He says, now it's more of a very long wave. So True. the movements in the market are a lot more lighter. Yeah. And I love that explanation. Yeah. Like we're not in a Pico de Sierra market anymore. Right. We're not in, in strong ups where we sell a lot and a strong downs. It's a stable market. Very true. But I think Costa del Sol, obviously, we're totally biased because we it's our home. But I just think Costa del Sol is such a unique and special place. And like people that come and experience it, then that's why they want to be living or enjoying the pleasure of actually experiencing this life that we have on. Like, come on, what's it? November the... Yeah, yeah. The, it, the sun is shining, the sky is blue, yeah. and uh, all right, it rained for about what, five minutes this morning. That's it. And then bump the, uh, the we're, 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 yeah, yeah. It was sort of walking. My goodness, it's so warm. And, but another part, I mean, you know, just to cater to the viewers, which might not interested in, might not be interested in Costa del Sol, but other yeah. parts of Spain. Yeah. For example, your son, he lives in Madrid. Madrid, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So for people that you know might be thinking of, you know, looking at properties in Madrid, prices in Madrid. I think the exact same thing happens. I mean, Madrid is maybe Absolutely. a wrong example because it's a capital. It's a capital. But, Absolutely. you know, property prices in Madrid are at a historical high. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I mean, yeah. does Jonathan, does he rent or does he... He rents like um, he, he he has um, looked into the into buying. But again, you mentioned about the, the, the banks and and um, so you have to add those extra costs on. And so, you know, I've, 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 you know, I had to be honest with him. Look, you need to have X amount of money there in your pot before you can even consider sort of like buying yeah. uh, something. Our daughter, she, she managed to, uh, but it was a renovation project. Mm. It was old. The properties in Madrid tend to be old. It's a bit like being in London, really. But it's hard. You know, something I will say, this is to answer these comments which we had in our last video. Foreigners are buying up properties that Spanish people aren't able to buy. My answer to that, being a young Spanish guy, is our government doesn't help us at all either. Yeah, true. Because I remember, Very like, true. there's all these sort of commotion about foreigners are buying up properties. Like, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I understand that point, and it's true in some areas, like, like Costa del Sol. But if you zoom out Costa del Sol, we talk about Madrid, Badajoz, all over Spain. What helps do young people have to buy a property? Yeah, absolutely true. zero. Absolutely. If there were some sort of helps, it would be great, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. anyway, maybe that, that's talking that's about another, that's, another that's, that's, another, that's another subject. Yeah. Just to wrap up, I think, like, you know, the question to uh, is the Spanish property market collapsing? I would categorically 100% um, on the record yeah. say absolutely no, no. way. Absolutely. Don't you agree? 100% agree with you. So 
Another very interesting sort of topic is housing. So mm -hmm. one of my collaborators, that's the on-site yeah. salesperson for Pure Sun, when we're in a presentation with him, he always goes to our clients. He goes, you see all the cranes that cost us He says, you'll see them everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, even if you multiply them by seven, mm -hmm. there's not enough property yeah. for the amount of local demand yeah. and international demand. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, no, I, I, t I, totally, I totally agree with you. It hurts me. It hurts me when I think of the, you know, I'm going to say our youngsters, but not, yeah. but, but like in, in Spain, our culture is very, very different. Yeah, yeah. 30, 35, living at home with your yeah, parents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's very quite, close. It's yeah. quite normal. Yeah, right, it's quite normal. Right. But part of the reason for that is that they, the rents might be high. Finding somewhere to rent is so, so difficult. Yeah, totally. um, And buying something. Yeah. So yeah, it's you're, you're, the you're correct. It's, uh, it's I, a lack. And I also think like, you know, maybe it's, it's um, uh, interesting to add that this lack of supply mm. is not only true to our real estate market. No. So like, you know, the title should be, you know, it's, it's actually everywhere. Like, you yeah. know, in, in Europe in general, you know, oh, talking gosh, about yeah. Germany, you know, Belgium, Definitely. Holland, UK. Definitely. In the UK, are there enough houses for the demand? Absolutely not. No, so not like, you know, when you look at a market like, like Spain, yeah. like, you know, there's not enough houses for the demand. Correct. Right? Correct. In certain areas. I mean, if you go inland and you go in the middle of nowhere, there's houses which are empty. Yeah. There are villages which are completely, Oops. you know, abandoned. Yeah. But in the top areas where or the areas where you want to live where you've got infrastructure there's just yeah. not enough housing yeah. it's a zoning problem it's true exactly yeah and that's maybe when the government maybe come in and help but as i say that's yeah. a that's a totally different subject uh, another for, video. That's another for another, another video. time for another time <laughs> all right perfect so i think that's a wrap kim great uh kim great, great. thanks very much for My joining pleasure. It's awesome pleasure awesome to have you on our costa insights good to be um, here um yeah and i think as a wrap guys thanks for watching the youtube channel uh once again uh, for those of you that are new, don't be shy. Press the button, subscribe to, to High Homes and to our team. We're going to keep you posted with videos like this one in the next few weeks. More content just like this one coming your way. Hasta luego.